Good morning. Glad to be here with you this morning at Clare Church as we finish up our series, Summer Spark, Conversations to Spark Your Faith. And we have another uh, sheet of questions for you to take home this week uh, to help you reflect and meditate and think through the things that uh, are in the scriptures that we've read today. So be sure to take this home with you and let it be a tool for you to help grow in your faith and to follow Jesus more closely. Uh, I think these were some good uh, questions to think about. All right, today we're in Matthew chapter 14, starting in verse 13. And as I read and think about these scriptures, you know, I'm always I'm trying to pray and reflect and think, okay, God, what is it that you want me to speak to these folks in St. Joseph, Missouri? What is it that you want them to hear? The first thing that uh, stood out to me was it said that the crowds followed Jesus on foot from the towns. And it struck me that what, wouldn't it be great if we had crowds that showed up to church? <laughs> wouldn't it be great if we were had something going on that crowds were coming and following them. That's what they were doing. They were going out to follow Jesus, to see what he had to say, to learn from him, to see the miracles he could do. There was something going on. And I was thinking, you know, we joke in college ministry, all we have to do is put up a sign that says free beer and throw a kegger, and we can get all kinds of people to show up. We can get crowds, right? But it's probably not the way we want to do it. Um, when you look at what Jesus was doing, what did he do to draw the crowds? So the crowds were following him around. They followed him out. And it says, when Jesus landed and he saw the large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sin. So when I think about the church, and, and for a while there, it seemed like, you know, the church needed to throw some kind of circus event, some kind of major production, do something to draw some kind of crowds. But when I look at what Jesus did to draw crowds, it was he had compassion on them. And I was thinking about the church, what, and I'm just, in general, what do we need to do and to be in the world is to have compassion on people. To have compassion, it says, and he healed their sick. He took care of their needs. Have compassion. Compassion isn't just a feeling. There's a difference between pity and compassion. There's a difference between just feeling sorry for somebody or feeling like you should help or you ought to help. Having compassion motivates. It inspires and motivates you to act and to do something. So Jesus looks at the crowds and he had compassion and he heals their sick. He does something for them. And I think this is an important teaching and a lesson for the church because it seems like a lot of times we try to get out of it. Because, listen to what happens. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, uh, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the village and buy themselves some food. Even the disciples in the New Testament, with Jesus right there, showing compassion, they're not getting it. And we do the same thing today. We come up with reasons or excuses not to have compassion. Or maybe we have a feeling, or maybe something comes up and we justify some way to get out of it. Uh, you know, one of my favorites is like, oh, I have faith, God will take care of that. Which isn't a bad thing to say necessarily. But sometimes maybe God does want to take care of it, and he wants to work through you because of your faith. So you can't just say, well, you know, or people will say, well, I'm waiting for God to do something. Maybe he's waiting on you to do something about that. Whatever it is. And even the disciples here in this story, look, let's just sit them home, they can go by their own food. Listen to what Jesus responds. He says, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. And I love this. 
I love this about Jesus because I think it gives us an example about what the church should be. That instead of turning people away, we should be finding ways to feed them. There are people who have felt turned away by the church. In the ways that, you know, a lot of people talk about today that people get turned away from the church is because uh, of their, their lifestyle choices. Maybe they don't look right. Maybe they don't fit in right. Maybe they have a different opinion than you. Jesus said, they don't need to go away. Let's feed them. Let's welcome them. Let's accept them. In fact, we even treat our own selves this way. Because look at what Jesus says next. He says, well, the disciples respond, well, look, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. The disciples say, well, we don't have enough. This is impossible. We don't have enough. We do the same thing. You will say, well, I'm not good enough. I'm not Jesus. I don't have the gifts. I don't have the talents. We don't have enough money. We don't have this. We don't have that. We come up with all kinds of reasons or excuses to not have compassion and to take care of people. Listen to what Jesus responds. He says, bring them to me. Bring them to me. I'll show you what I can do. And to me, I think we need to hear this message. Jesus didn't ask, well, is it the high quality bread? Are they good fish? He just said, bring them to me. He wasn't worried about where you come from, what you're capable of. He said, bring it to me. Bring it on. See what I can do. I think we need to do that same kind of thing in our own minds, in our own hearts, in our own lives. Because so many times we count ourselves out for not being good enough. I gotta get my life put together before I can, you know, volunteer or do X, Y, or Z. I gotta put my life back together before I can take communion. I gotta put my life back together before I can go to church. I gotta, whatever it is. Jesus says, just bring it. Come on, bring it. Let's see what I can do. Bring them here to me, he said. And so he directs the people to sit down on the grass, take the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks. And he broke the loaves. And then he gave it to the disciples, and the disciples gave it to the people, and they all ate, and they were all satisfied, and they gathered up twelve basketful of leftovers. And I don't want to take away from the miracle of Jesus being able to multiply food, but I think there's a even bigger miracle here that Jesus changed the hearts and the minds of the people. That what they thought was impossible became possible through Christ. What they thought was not enough became abundant because of Jesus Christ. The disciples who thought, I'm not good enough, we don't have enough, we can't do this. Learn. Through Christ, we are enough. There is more than enough. And so as I read through this and I hear Jesus say, bring them to me, I think it's a calling back to what our purpose is. And I think somewhere along the way, the church, and I'm just saying the church in general, we got off track somewhere. We began trying to get people into heaven. And that's not a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with heaven. But what I see here in the New Testament, and Jesus calling to us and teaching his disciples, saying, bring them to me. That our mission, our purpose is to bring people to Jesus, who is the way. That we need to focus on meeting the crowds and bringing them to Jesus. We need to focus in our own lives. Am I offering myself to Jesus and focus on Christ? That's our one mission, our one purpose, our one goal, the main thing to do. To connect people to Jesus Christ. To introduce people to Jesus Christ. 
to meet him, not just for the first time, but then to grow in a relationship and knowing Jesus intimately. To develop and grow in our discipleship in following him. The whole point is to come to Jesus. So Jesus says, bring it to me. See what I can do. And he's saying to you, bring your life to me and see what I can do. With it. You may feel ashamed. You may feel broken. You may feel beat up. You may be, uh, have been through something difficult. Something tragic. You may have wounds or scars. Bring them to me. You may be sick or hurting or hungry. Jesus says, bring it to me. Bring it. And see what I can do. Now this, this little piece here about... Uh, he gave it to the disciples. The disciples gave it to the people. They all ate. They were satisfied. This, this miracle of changing their hearts and their minds. I think he was trying to change an attitude from scarcity to one of abundance. I've learned a little bit about this having kids uh, because now that we have Zeke and Elise, eight and three, there's always something that's mine and not hers. Or it's mine and not his, right? And you got to protect your territory of what's mine. And it's a prevailing attitude in life. You know, get out there, get what's yours, and protect it. And, I, and what happens is, I feel like sometimes our hearts get hardened. And this is a huge miracle that Jesus can change the hearts and minds and soften hearts and minds and get people to realize that in Christ there is an abundance. That there is more than enough. We begin to share and show that compassion for others. So, are you hearing this scripture speaking to you? Are we, the church, Claire Church in St. Joseph, Missouri, hearing this scripture speak to us to guide and teach and direct us? Are we hearing Jesus say, Bring it to me? Are we hearing Jesus? Lift up those prayers of thanks and give thanks and have thankful hearts that are aware of the abundance of God. Are we hearing Jesus call to us that number one purpose and mission to bring people to Jesus? To bring your heart to Jesus? To bring your life to Jesus? To offer your time, your talents, your treasure to Jesus and see what he can do with you. Because we have so much to offer. I know that there are gifts in this room and in this place and among the people who for some reason couldn't make it to church today. Hopefully they're watching out there. <laughs> there are gifts, ideas, we need to find ways to bridge with our community. It's one of the reasons why uh, our mission is shifting from Hillcrest Transitional Housing to our local elementary school, Bessie Ellison. My goal this week is to get a list of the, the teachers and the classrooms so that we can pray and have prayer sponsors for each teacher and classroom at the school, that we can be praying for them. And, and you know, it might open up an opportunity to give some kind of uh, physical blessings for their classroom. Teachers always have needs that they're looking to fill. But the most important thing that teachers love to know is that they're supported. That they're not alone in that classroom. They love to know they're supported. Uh, building the bridge with our community so that these crowds can see Jesus and can meet people in our church. You know, I think the other place besides bri bridging into our community, we can, you can also do bridge events. I know churches that do block parties and other things and they really canvas the neighborhood and advertise and 
get as many people as they can just so they can get faces and names and phone numbers and build relationships with new people. Because what happens? We all get in our own little circles of our friends and it, after years and years of having those friends, it's hard to expand them, right? So churches find ways to meet and make new friends. The other thing besides bridging with our community, I think we can invest in another way, I think, is uh, investing online. That more and more people are checking things out online before they ever show up somewhere. I mean, I know me personally, I love to shop for something online and then maybe go buy it in the store. <laughs> I can check it out, know everything about it, know all my options, where the best price is, which one has the best features and the best value, and then go. Uh, people will check out your church once, twice, multiple times even, online, before they ever even think about getting in their car and even driving. So I think investing in online and being able to reach people through it, and it, there's so many people that you can connect with through social media and having that presence online. And it's, I think it's a shift that the church needs to be able to make. Uh, and there's other ideas that I, that I have. There's other ideas that you have that we can do to bridge our community, to meet new people so that we can know who the crowds are, so that we can, it wasn't to just have fun and throw a party, it was to have them show compassion and take action to help those who are in need. I mean, what kinds of needs do our crowds face today in our community? Because there are people everywhere who need to know Jesus. They could be struggling under mountains of debt. They could be struggling with their own uh, self-image or uh, feeling alone and lonely. There could be just fear. Fear of things going on in the world and in life. It could be uh, a lack of peace or anxiety. All kinds of things going on in our community. We could build those bridges. Bring them to Jesus. So that's what it's about. That's what it was all about. Jesus is the one that can take care of getting them into heaven or not. Right? Bring them to Jesus. Sometimes I feel like maybe we got off track somewhere, you know. Uh, you know, I kind of grew up half Baptist, maybe. And all the preaching about it, it seemed like the end, altar call at the end was, do you know where you're going to go when you die? You know what I want to know? Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? That's the altar call. And can you know him better? I was, I was just thinking about that because I've done years of youth uh, church camps and things. And at the end of the week, I'm glad you're all are saying bye to your friends and missing all your friends. But do you know Jesus? That's what I want to know. And I think that's what he's charged the church for us to do in our community. And maybe it's not up front in your face because that can seem what? judgmental towards people, right? That's not what we're going for. But it's as simple as having compassion and caring for people and bringing them to meet and to know Jesus. Are you hearing? Are you listening? Offer yourselves to Christ and see what he can do. Let's pray. Holy God, we hear you calling to us, and often we feel unworthy. There are mistakes that we've made. There's been times we've had opportunities to show compassion, and we've justified away an excuse out of it. We've said things to people that we shouldn't say. We've done things that we shouldn't do. We feel ashamed 
worried that you might not accept this. And yet still you say, bring it to me. And so we offer our lives to you. Forgive us of our sins. Wash us clean from our, our shame and our guilt. Heal this brokenness that we've caused. And the brokenness that's been done to us. And help us to focus on that one mission and the purpose of connecting people to you, Jesus Christ. God, we long to see miracles like this at work in our lives where hard hearts are broken and reshaped and transformed and filled with your love, your mercy and grace. We long to see our community to be healed to know joy and the fullness of your presence. We long to see families coming together to sing your praises. We long to see relationships that were broken be healed. All of these are signs and wonders of you. your work. And as we look out, God, we see that all of creation is testifying to your glory and giving you praise. And we want to be a part of that. And so we bring ourselves to you. God, multiply your spirit within us. Show us the abundance of your life through us. Oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.